This video is sponsored by NordVPN. After looking at the iconic timelines of Homer, Bart and Ned Flanders, I reached out to you guys to see who we should examine next, and you guys overwhelmingly voted for Mo Sislak. Or as the ladies like to call me, hey you behind the bushes. Mo is perhaps the most tragically hilarious character in The Simpsons. But this grumpy old bartender gets up to some pretty interesting things whilst the family aren't around. From teaching funk dancing to fend off gangsters dissing your fly girl, to dealing with a mysterious prank caller. Is there a leaky bum? I Somebody checked the weir, I know I got a leaky bum! So let's explore the evolution of Mo, from his bizarre childhood to his clones. What the spider got into the cloning machine? And everything else in between. This is the complete Mo Sislak timeline. But before we continue, please be sure to subscribe to The Simpsons Theory and let me know whose timeline you'd like to see next. Mo's Mysterious Origins Now, before we dive into the specificities of ages and numbers, we need to define Mo's real parental backstory. As it is a little muddle to say the least. In the episode Moe's Rags to Riches, it's revealed that his father was actually a yeti. Although we could just brush this episode off seeing as it was told by the perspective of an old talking bar rag. Yes, really. However, Mo has alluded to his monstrous ancestry in the past. When Lady Gaga stops off in Springfield, she calls the town her little monsters, to which Mo replies, uh, Actually, I'm half monster, half Armenian. Pick your poison. And in Springfield Up, we see archival footage of a young Mo talking about his parents. My dad was a circus freak, but my mom don't remember which one. Could the circus freak have been a yeti scooped up in Mo's childhood? Well, it could be quite plausible. However, in the episode King Leo, we are finally introduced to Mo's real father. Morty Sislak, nice to meet you. So, taking this into account, I'd say that the yeti was only Mo's adoptive father, or seeing as we have never seen her, maybe it's even his mother. But more on his family troubles later. Also, it's most likely that Mo wasn't born in the USA. When Springfield proposes a referendum that requires all illegal immigrants in Springfield to be deported, Mo is seen taking a US citizenship test. His heritage is all over the place. Sometimes he's Armenian, other times he's Dutch, and occasionally Italian. Hey Mo, what's the matter? You no talk with your accent no more. Mamma mia! Now Mo is very protective of his private life, and so he should. You never know who is out there waiting to steal your personal information. And that's where NordVPN comes in. NordVPN helps protect you online by shielding your identity from thieves and hackers, and the great thing is that you can even use it on your phone while you're on the go. And not only does NordVPN help protect your private information, it's also really useful for unlocking new movies and TVs on streaming services around the world. This means that you can unlock content not available in your country. Not only that, but you can use NordVPN on up to six devices. So go to nordvpn.com forward slash Simpsons Theory or use the coupon Simpsons Theory to get 70% off the two year plan plus one additional month for free. So that's only £2.63 a month. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not wholly satisfied. The link is in the description down below. Age 6, Moe's Good Looks, Them Robots. I bet you didn't know that Mr. Burns played a big role in Moe's life, did ya? Well, wrap your noggin around this. When Mr. Burns buys the nuclear power plant, he strides through town in style, riding around on an elephant. A young Mo comes up and tries to stroke the giant beast, but it stamps on his head. Absolutely horrified, Mo looks into a mirror and sees that his youthful face has transformed before his eyes, turning into a grotesque visage. Mo's appearance has been described as having little rat eyes, caveman bro, don't forget that fish snout. Okay, I get it. And poor Mo has always been sensitive about his over exaggerated features, especially after he wins a beer tender competition and the prize of starring on the calendar. But unfortunately for him, his mug gets hidden under several layers of stickers. Fed up with his appearance, he later gets plastic surgery to make him handsome. The procedure works so well that he is so good looking that women throw themselves left, right, and center at him instead of running away like they used to. 
His handsome face even puts him on TV screens in a soap opera. However, this handsome stint is cut short when a prop wall falls and lands on his face, disfiguring the poor guy yet again. Age 16, King Lear the Sislax was a mattress empire, owning several stores around town, and as the older sibling, Mo was poised to become king, taking over the family business. But in a bid to prove himself and to get rid of some competition, Morty asks Mo to release bedbugs in a rival store. It's the Sislax way! But before he unleashes the bedbugs, Mo stops in his tracks when spotting a picture of the happy family who owns the rival store, and he just couldn't go through with it. Yet the seemingly wholesome family didn't share the same sentiment, breaking into the Sislak store to do the absolute same, exposing those lovely mattresses to bed bugs, leading to the Sislaks closing down some of their stores. Therefore, Mo was cast off from the family business and shunned. He would be estranged from his family for many years to come until Morty would re enter his life. With him comes the announcement that he's retiring, gifting each of his three children with a mattress store. And it seems like the past was all under the bridge. I miss you, Frigs. But when his siblings start a smear campaign against Mo's store, an all out war ensues. Mo stabs their inflatable gorilla and lets loose a porcupine in their store. And in turn, they sabotage Mo's remote beds, most likely killing poor Mole Man in the process. To get the final win over his family in a strange turn of events, Mo threatens to set bedbugs free in the mattress warehouse. Morty even encourages Mo to do it, but we all know that Mo is a good guy deep down and couldn't bring himself to do it, no matter how awful they were to him. Aged 18, the way we weren't. After disappointing his family, Mo was dumped at a camp for underprivileged boys. Parents dropped him off here like two years ago and they never came back for him. He sleeps under a canoe and acts as the unofficial camp counselor to other boys down on their luck. This is when he meets Homer, Carl and Lenny and they become lifelong friends. And being a bit older than the other boys, Mo seemingly takes on the bigger brother role, saving the gang from a young fat Tony and his cronies. While at the camp, his mate Homer goes on a date with Marge, but it ends in disaster as Homer falls off of a cliff and gets trapped in a fat camp. And in order to reach Homer, Marge calls up the camp Homer's supposed to be at, asking for him. But Mo answers the payphone and assumes that the call is a prank, screaming threats down at the caller. And that's the origin of that. Mo's prank calls is one of the show's longest running gags, and it's funny to take note how it possibly originated. My theory being that after Mo was cast up by his family, he had to develop quickly at a young age, making him grounded, guarded, and protective. And so, when he feels like someone's making a fool out of him, and particularly vulnerable, a burning rage ignites. A bit sad, but also pretty hilarious. My personal favourites being... Why can't I find a man to hug and kiss? <laughs> Age 25, the Homer they fall. After witnessing Homer getting wailed on by three guys and not going down, Mo has an epiphany suggesting that Homer would make a great boxer. It's here we find out that Mo was actually a boxer in his youth and he offers to coach Homer. With this, Mo unveils his trophy room that doubles up as the women's bathroom. But his boxing career was cut short when he was knocked out 40 times in a row. Thus explaining his confusing backstory, his memory is so whacked that he gets things a bit confused. Gee, I'm sorry, I used to box, you know, my brain's, well, it's kind of in and out. Age 46, the seemingly never-ending story. While heading out to buy some urinal cake mix, he meets Edna Krabappel, the new girl fresh in town. In a bit to try and impress her, he finds out that Edna hates taverns, and so he bends the truth. But me, I'm a highly respected um, therapist for alcoholics. They fall in love in a summer loving romance and plan to leave Springfield together forever. But before they ditch town, Edna heads into the school that she's supposed to start working at to tell them that she's bailing. It's here that she meets Bart Simpson for the very first time, and he tells her that he does bad in school because nobody believes in him, when in reality, he is just distracting her while Nelson stole school supplies. So Edna informs Mo that she can't leave the town while children need her, and Mo flies into a fit, throwing her luggage out of the car and drives off. 
And to think, if Mo did not like such a tool, and if Bart Simpson wasn't around, him and Edna could have lived happily ever after. But then again, we wouldn't have got Nedna, which is a relationship I really love. But don't worry, Modna fans, Mo and Edna would hook up again briefly. Now, let's talk about Mo's relationships. For someone who is a self confessed gargoyle, he hasn't been too unsuccessful in love. He meets an attractive florist who agrees to go on a date with him. My name is Renee. Who cares? You're going out with me. Fun fact, did you know that Renee was played by actress Helen Hunt, who was Hank Azaria's wife at the time? And as we all know, Hank Azaria is the voice of Mo Sislak. But in order to keep her interested, he desperately overspends, maxing out all of his credit cards. So to get some more cash, he hatches up a harebrained scheme with a practically hairless Homer to steal his car and commit insurance fraud. But unsurprisingly, the plan goes awry, landing Homer in jail and Mo buying tickets to Hawaii. But after seeing Homer's sad, sad face behind bars, Mo admits his wrongdoing to Renee and she is accepting at first. But when Mo talks of faking their deaths and fleeing to Hawaii, she's a bit overwhelmed and leaves. You going to find the corpses? Yes, Mo, I'm going to find corpses. But Mo does find love again when he meets Maya on a dating website. And after going on a few dates, Mo is in love. It's like my heart wants to do her. He soon pops the question and it seems to all be coming up Mo House. But when he takes a small person joke a bit too far, he insults his intended wife and she asks him to leave. In order to win her back, he goes to Dr. Nick to turn him into a small person too. But Maya stops the procedure just in time. I don't want someone who sees me as short. I want someone who just sees me as beautiful. So Mo is single yet again, but he does keep a photo of them behind his bar, which is so cute. Mo would also meet and fall in love with a Russian lady called Anna, but at the altar, he finds out that she's a con artist from Ohio, planning to steal all of his money, and he cancels. Well, it looks like this just became a shotgun wedding. But don't feel too bad for Mo, he does get to date Katy Perry. Age 47, normal day. So Mo's age is a little inconsistent as Mo once claimed to be an original member of the Little Rascals. But for the sake of consistency, I'm gonna go with the age listed on the Simpsons fandom wiki page, which is pretty much my holy grail. And a grave upon his holy legislature is the age of 47. In the episode The Way We Weren't and The Blunder Years, Mo is portrayed as a spotty teenager compared to his friends, so 47 does make the most sense. One of the biggest characteristics of Mo, sadly, is his loneliness. Oh, I'm so desperately lonely. <laughs> And even though Mo hides behind his often mob bleeding rough facade, I think it's a mask to conceal his crippling depression. And there's one more finding to support this case. Springfield is of course no stranger to mobs. In fact, it seems that one breaks out every single week. And who's always at the front and center of these events? Mo Sislak. I feel that he's so eager to join in with his violent mobs because it gives him a real feeling of belonging to a certain group, no matter what its motive is. Perhaps it alleviates his loneliness, if only temporarily. Mo is, without a doubt, the most tragic character in the show, consistently beaten down by life. But he refuses to give up, choosing to believe that there is some hope out there. Not today, old friend. And there is an explicit example of this, being that instead of sticking his head in an oven, he replaces it with a turkey and gifts it to the Simpsons family for Christmas. It's this glimmer of tenderness that really gets given its chance to shine when Mo is around kids. And his face lights up whenever he sees Homer's kids, which is absolutely adorable. Oh, little bot, we hear all about your monkey shines. This special connection with Homer's kids is really shown through his love for Maggie. One day, Mo is about to jump from a bridge, ready to end it all once again. But at that very moment, Marge gets into a car accident and Maggie flies into the air and lands into Mo's arms. That moment quite literally saved both of them, forming a very parental bond. Life don't seem so hard no more. From here, he begins babysitting her, becoming almost a guardian. 
I really think Mo would have made a really amazing father. He's got so much love to give. And he reads to sick children at the hospital every Wednesday for peace sake. <laughs> And of course, we can't talk about Mo without talking about his beloved tavern. Mo got his degree in bartending from Swigmore University and later opened Mo's Tavern. His booze joint is an inanimate extension of his gruff character, rough around the edges and a broken up love machine in the corner, and slightly repellent. Daddy, this place smells like Tinker! Mm -hmm. The bar has been through several renovations throughout its existence, from a <coughs> pet shop to a family-friendly restaurant aptly named Uncle Mo's Family Feedback. We also saw the bar turn into a British pub called the Nag and the Weasel, a gay bar, and when Mo stole Homer's cocktail concoction, he changed the name of his bar to the stolen successful drink's name, Flaming Mo's. But at the end of the day, the tavern proves it cannot be concealed, reverting right back to its original dingy look again and again. Age 55, future drama. Now it seems that Mo may have found a cure for his loneliness for good, as it's revealed that he has cloned himself. But that may have not been the best idea. Hey, I'm not the clone, you're the clone. Oh, please, not this again. Also, at around this time, Homer and Marge have split up yet again, and she is now dating Krusty the Clown. As Homer and Krusty fight for Marge's affection, Mo and his clone are writing on the sidelines like a python waiting to strike. Whenever Homer is seemingly out of the picture, he swoops in like the smooth daddy he tries very hard to be. And despite being rejected, it doesn't stop him. Age 77, Days of Future Future. Although Springfield has evolved with the times, Moe's bar hasn't changed one bit. This is mostly because the tavern is always a crime scene. We see the body outlines of Capital City Goofball as well as Sideshow Bob and his rake. <laughs> and Cheeky Mo is still trying to hit on Midge, even at a ripe old age. Mo now spends his twilight years looking after an old and frail duff man. Oh, yeah! And so that ends the Mo like timeline. We have unveiled his harsh exterior to a soft and mushy inside that just wants to be loved by his friends, ladies, kids and Midge. Even though Mo may seem tragic at times, he at least probably has the most loyal friends of all, completely and utterly dependent on him. And finally, I'd like to thank my newest Flying Hellfish members, GameBoss49, Chaz Kazados, Jeff Martin, Gil and Glenford Young. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, it really means a big, big deal to me. And of course, my other lovely Flying Hellfish members. We have Timothy, who was for Zane, Liam, Steve, Charlie, Sean, Justin, Andre, Stefan, Nicholas, Vincent, Robert, Ashley, Kevin, Glenford, Devin, Gadrak, Stephen, Anthony, Nicola, Nerdcentric, Jeffrey, Mason, Valentin, Abby, Dominic, Cody, Kim, Aaron, Jacku Star, Game Boss 49, Chaz, Jeff, and Gil.